Well, hello and welcome to Straight Talk on Mining, the webcast series. I may be making forward statements, so be forewarned. So this is module number six, gold and silver deposits. We're more than halfway through here. Uh, so um, take heart. <laughs> this is from the Hishikari mine, which is uh, arguably the, the uh, highest grade uh, gold silver mine being mined today by Sumitomo Minerals. And you can see beautiful, beautiful black gingoro bands through this and running almost uh, a kilo kilogram of gold per ton and over three kilos of silver per ton. Incredible, incredible high grade stuff. Lovely, lovely stuff. So again, very, very important to understand where you are in the gold zone, uh, in the system here vertically. And alteration here uh, also uh, gives us uh, clues, but I won't go into that because it's a little bit more advanced. But I wanna show you how we find the needle in the haystack here, how we, uh, in these very, very large areas, narrow it down to find the deposit itself. And this is a real good clue. So this is from the south of Fruta del Norte, a on surface. And you see all these crisscrossing uh, structures through here. And um, I have to thank a geologist from New Zealand by the name of Peter Grieve, who first uh, uh, showed me this and was whooping up and down saying, gosh, you know, you're very, very close to the gold zone here. And uh, he said, this is what's called calcite replacement texture. This is a lattice work of quartz, quartz crystals, which have replaced calcite. Now, calcite is a funny mineral because calcite has reverse solubility a thing like a sugar cube will melt faster in uh in coffee in hot water than it will in cold water calcite actually will uh dissolve faster in cold water than it will in hot water so uh it is precipitated it comes out of the uh the solution in the veins it forms crystals in the veins and then as it cools down the crystals will dissolve and be replaced by quartz. And quartz is something which is almost indestructible. It's very, very, very hard, and uh, it doesn't weather easily, so it doesn't really weather at all. So this is going to persist in the geological record, and when we find this, we whoop up and down because this is indicative of a boiling zone, and the gold and the silver are gonna be close by. Here's a sample from the Golden Cross Mine uh, North Island, New Zealand. And again, you can see this crisscrossing lattice work uh, in its open space filling here. And this is beautiful, beautiful looking stuff from an active gold mine. Here it is at Hishikari. Uh, the first uh, slide here was from Hishikari. And you can see sometimes they're parallel, sometimes they're crisscrossing, but it's beautiful, beautiful stuff. And again, here's Fruta del Norte as an example, and you see lots and lots of crisscrossing here in the drill core, beautiful stuff. And then this is from the Omui Pro Prospect of Irving Resources, and they've released some results recently. And I got very, very, um, uh, uh, very uh, uh, impressed by this, I must say. Uh, you can see lots and lots of calcite replacement texture through here and down through here, and down through here, and through here. And this drill core has not been, the assays haven't come back from it, at least they haven't been released yet, but um, you can see potential Gingoro bands running through here. And I think this is gonna be a winner. Uh, it's certainly very, very indicative of a uh, precipitating gold zone. Great stuff. And this is from Arania's property from the Kiris Prospect. This was a float boulder, meaning it was just loose in the streams that we found. And again, crisscrossing stuff. And this needs to be followed up and investigated. Again, at things like Yowie and Crunchy Hill, we don't have this kind of stuff because the erosional profile is such that it hasn't bit down into it and revealed this like it did at Fruta del Norte and at other places. That stuff from Hishikari is from the active mine from underground. Doesn't, doesn't occur on surface. 
But if you see this stuff on the surface, you have to follow it up and investigate it. Here he is again, jumping for joy. The pilgrim rejoiceth over his pile, but morn dispels these fairy scenes and want arouses pluck. He shoulders pick and pan once more, again to try his luck. He digs in dark secluded depths, the spots where slugs abound. I told you it was purple prose. And oh, what raptures fill his breast, his pile at last is found. Here he is very, very happy.